What up, fam? So this past weekend, I saw Top Gun Maverick, and it was insane. So insane that it got me motivated to build Brick Veterans P-51D 352nd Fighter Group Mustang. So this set I've had for a while, like probably half a year, maybe beginning of the year. I don't remember when I got this, maybe end of last year. I, it's just been lost in my backlog and I just haven't touched it for a minute. And I am a great fan of Brick Veterans kits, like quality of their packaging, build experience, the durability, the instructions, and I would consider them like top shelf for custom Lego sets. If you haven't seen Maverick yet, I would definitely recommend watching it in theaters versus you waiting until it comes out to be able to watch on your own TV screens. You need to see it in a huge screen with really, really loud audio because it is intense. Like my wife doesn't care for Top Gun. Like I'm a fan of Top Gun. I, I love the original. My wife can care less and she thought it was a great movie. Like you don't really need to watch the first one to watch this one. I mean, it does help, but like it, there was probably like one moment where I'm like, okay. Side note, the original Top Gun movie was a huge recruiting success for fighter pilots for a couple decades. I mean, it wasn't intended for that purpose or maybe it was, but a lot of fighter pilots in the Navy were influenced by that movie so much that like, if you were to recite one of the lines, like a need for speed, during a debrief or something like that, you would get fined like, you know, for five dollars in like the drink pool or something like that. Cause it was just like, it's just so hard not to reference the movie in anything. And it's one of those classic military movies that so many in my generation and others grew up with. So the US Navy is hoping that Top Gun Maverick influences people to want to join the Navy and become fighter pilots. It's no easy feat and retention rate is pretty much at a low right now. So the Navy's in need of fighter pilots. They are an essential role in the US military for both the Navy and the Marine Corps. With all that being said, go watch Maverick. It's a great movie. If you don't like it after watching it, my bad. For those of you who haven't seen the movie yet, you're probably asking why does the P-51 Mustang relate to the movie? Well, the P-51 is in it. It's not the essential aircraft that's all over the screen, but it's pretty much in it. Both the F-18E and the F, Rhino or Super Hornet were showcased primarily throughout the entire movie. So I have the Tomcat, both F-18s, I need a P-51 Mustang, and also Brick Veterans coming out with a P-51D Tuskegee Airmen Red Tails edition of this aircraft. So I am excited for that one. I've been waiting for Red Tails, for someone to do a Red Tails. Here's the outside of the box, the artwork, very simple, minimalistic, logo in the back, easy cover to slip off. And this like high-end black box packaging that kind of seals in place with some sort of magnet or something here. I don't know how it works but it's like high-end quality box. I think I already opened this in the past. Maybe I tried doing this video a long time ago. They are numbered. I mean, I can't say this enough. Number bags goes a long way when building any kits. Custom minifig, I think minifig go. Here are the instructions. Very light. It looks like it's gonna be a quick build. Here is the certificate of authenticity. This is number 65 out of, oh dude. How many did they make? A hundred of these? Specifications on the aircraft. And here are some of the pages for the kind of instructions that you're gonna see, very easy to follow. Kind of looks weird for the light bluish gray, but I kind of like the way that looks. It actually looks like light bluish gray. I mean, they have these like fun facts for all of their kits and a little bit things to kind of know when you, as you're building, you you get to gain some knowledge when you're moving with this set. So Brick Veterans P-51D, 352nd Fighter Group, DV0012, 462 pieces, designed by Cody yourself. Considered one of the best fighter aircrafts from World War II, its speed, range, maneuverability, and firepower gave the plane great versatility. The Mustang was used in all major theaters of war, fulfilling long-range high-altitude escorts, strafing, and photo reconnaissance. The 352nd Fighter Group was based out of Bonn, Norfolk from July 1943 until November 1945, but spent its winter months in 1944-45, to with detachments moving to bases in Belgium to provide extra air support to ground forces during the Battle of the Bulge, and to assist with airborne assaults across the Rhine. Now this is my second Mustang that I've ever built. First one by Brick Veteran. Again, they are coming out with a Tuskegee Airmen version or the Red Tails version this Friday or on Friday, or if you're watching this after Friday, this past Friday, or a Friday long time ago. Now the P-51D has a very distinctive fuselage shape and wingspan. I think Cody did a good job in capturing that exact look 
for the aircraft. Not only that, but the dehedral that you can slightly see when looking at the front part of the aircraft was done. I, I know Cody's really good at doing the cancer or the dehedrals for planes or aircraft when needed. Sometimes in the past, it, he has gone a little bit overboard. And by I mean, sometimes like just one time. But in this case for the P-51D, I think he captured it very well. Now this set does have the ability to retract the landing gear. So in case you want to have it in a more flying position, it is very swishable. <laughs> There are some fragile points, but as long as you're just grabbing it by the fuselage, I think you will be fine. Now, it would have been cool if the propellers were not facing straight ahead. If they had a little bit of tilt, that would have taken this to another level as far as looks is concerned. But it's a very interesting technique how he was able to put this in the nose, or at least propellers themselves, into these plates, then put into the engine. I mean, if I were to choose between that technique and having tilted propellers, I think I'd go for this technique because that's actually really cool. Very smooth. I was not expecting it to be that way, especially because you have the studs facing the engine as opposed to going outwards. So before I lower the landing gear, I want to point out this one key feature that is pretty dominant in all P-51 Mustangs as far as the look is concerned. You can see on the side of the underbelly towards the rear of the aircraft, which is this radiator that's underneath the belly. Now it causes the Meredith effect, which is a phenomenon where like the aerodynamic drag produced by a cooling radiator may offset the careful design in a cooling duct, such that the useful thrust is produced by the expansion of the hot air in the duct. So yeah, I read that off Google. So that is one key feature that I'm happy that Cody Ocell did not leave out is having that radiator in the bottom of the aircraft so that we can get this kind of oval shape towards the rear of the plane. Under the plane, you have these stars and bars that are also printed. Now, this aircraft has no stickers whatsoever. There's all printing done by brick designers from the nomenclature of the aircraft, further stars and bars, both on the wing and the fuselage, to the canopy itself, because LEGO does not make a clear canopy. So this had to be printed on this kind of tinted version. Same thing with the propellers, the pilot's name, and all the swastikas, which represent all the vehicles and or aircraft that this pilot has knocked out. Also the name of this aircraft and markings on the fuel tanks. And since I'm on the fuel tanks, you can see that these joystick pieces that were once joystick pieces have been removed with a joystick and used as one of the Browning machine guns for the aircraft. And the P-51 has six. So yeah, each one of those are guns. Now, one thing that is interesting is that there is no printing in the inside of the aircraft. I feel like if there was one, even though it's a cramped space, it would have been cool to have at least one part of the joystick like right here be printed, but maybe not. It might be kind of a waste since there's really no room to do anything, just like the actual P-51 Mustang. It was a very cramped aircraft, just like the real thing. It is hard to stick a minifigure in there. So what I do is pull out this plate, which is supposed to be in the cockpit, put it on the feet of the minifigure, place the minifigure in his seating position, remove the side of the aircraft, slide him inwards comfortably, and then push forward. And now he's locked in position. So just like in real life where sometimes a pilot needs help to be pulled out of this aircraft and or put in, same concept. So although annoying to do, just think of it as, as close to realism as possible because it's a very tight space for an actual person to fit in a P-51. I got the plates backwards. Printed plates on separate tiles. There is the E. The wing flaps do move up and down. Same thing with the ailerons. Simulate movement if you want them to do so. All around, a good looking kit. I am finally happy to have one of Cody Ocell's P-51s that he's designed. I feel like he finally mastered what a P-51 in Lego can look like. He has done this, I, I think, twice maybe? already and i think this is his best one yet now as far as the minifigure is concerned this is major george e preddy jr or ratsy he flew with the 352nd and unfortunately he was killed by friendly fire from a u.s anti-aircraft battery on christmas day in 1944 i'm actually reading the last part of this book which has that fun fact but here is a minifigure done by minifig co but like i've said before in the past do great work even though they don't like me much. Now, aside from his face printing, he has that standard World War II pilot look that they've done a few times. I'm not really sure if they've done other renditions of their American World War II pilots. To me, this feels like the standard look for what I believe they do. I'm not really sure there's like little specific details aside from the face print that might defer this one from other versions of their minifigure pilots for World War II. 
kind of redundant there. But either way, he feels like he is UV printed 360 degree printing all the way around the minifigure to include the legs and the side of the torsos. Really, there's not much else to say, but he is a really good looking minifigure. Once again, a great set done by Brick Veteran. Good job, guys. I am never disappointed every time I build one of your sets. I love the P-51 Mustang. It's my favorite World War II aircraft. I know there's been problems with people doing them in the past, but this is a great looking kit. I will try to figure out a way to display this one, but I can't wait to get the other P-51 and look at both of them at the same time. So let me know what you guys think. If you made it with me all the way to the end of this video, thumbs up, thumbs down, like, comment, subscribe below, and I'll see you on the next video. All right, guys. Peace. Go watch Maverick.